My mum was like on my case, like to get a job and that, and I was like, listen, mum, you know, I've always been this. I was like, I know what I'm doing with my life. Just sit back and watch. And mm -hmm. she was like, no, because you need a job and you need to like secure your, your future. And I was like, yeah, okay, I understand that, but it's my way. Let me do it how I'm going to do it. Just believe in me. And I didn't really care if, if I didn't make a career or if I didn't make crazy amounts of money. I just wanted to do what I really like to do. So you were pretty headstrong and you were going very clearly in one direction, but then I guess at around 19, 20, 2012, Liverpool wasn't the most ideal place for you to be anymore. N not really. Uh, like, I was training a lot, but I was like, you know, just mixing with not the wrong crowds and that, but just, you know, just a Liverpool teenager, like 18, 19, just getting myself into trouble and that. And uh, I was in a nightclub and I got stabbed and it was like a millimetre from, I think it was a tendon or a nerve. It was a nerve and if it would have, if it would have hit the nerve, apparently it would have bled to death. Gosh, That's what the doctor told me. I had the chat with my coach of what, what, what was like the best to do. Is like, if you want to continue fighting, you've got to get focused. You've got to stop arsing around, as he said. And I was like, okay. And he was like, this is really what you want to do then you have to go to Brazil. The, the, Liverpool's not the place for you at the, this moment in time. And I was like, okay, coach. Tell me about landing in Brazil. As, uh, it's got to have been overwhelming. Yeah, it, it was. It was overwhelming because I was like, I didn't know when I was coming back. I didn't know what I was going into. And I always used to think that they were making jokes about me. And I was mm. like, are these making just fun of me? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I remember like, it was hard because I was in like an apartment on my own. Not many people speak English and that, so it was really hard to like order food and go to the supermarket and that. So at this point I was like, if I stay here and don't speak this language, I'm gonna really struggle. So I was like, okay, right. And I made a list, I was like, right, you're gonna wake up, you're gonna eat your food, you're gonna go to the gym. And when you get back in the afternoon, you're gonna study a bit of Portuguese on Google Translate. You can go training again in the night and then come back and do the same thing. Just do that every repeat, night. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Repeat, repeat until you learn Portuguese. Yeah. In, in, in a few months, I was just like rolling Portuguese off my tongue. So you're not only a young lad in another country, completely out of your comfort zone, whole new culture, whole new language, but you're probably fresh blood in the gym as well. Well, yeah, I was. How were they with you? Well, it was it was mad because I was fresh blood, but I was also over there to teach them Muay Thai. They, my coach, Marcelo, wanted me to be the Muay Thai instructor. Yeah. Through technique and that, I was able to translate me at fresh blood, but they were also fresh blood for me because I was thinking, I'm teaching you Muay Thai. I'm gonna break every single last one of you. And I remember Colin used to say to me, make sure you kill everyone in the gym, every session, be the best in the session in, in the gym. And I was like, okay, Col. At that point, my gram wasn't the best, and they're all, you know, as you know, Brazilians are renowned for being good black belts and whatever. And I was getting tapped in me, and I was like, oh, there's gonna be a day where I'm gonna get yours. And then just gradually, as the months went by, I was just ruining people. I was just dead. I had I was just a man on a mission, on a crazy mission. Speaking to Colin every week would just make me like more the time he'd be like, Till, make sure you kill everyone in that gym. I'd be like, okay, Carl. Did you get homesick? No. Really? No, I didn't miss nothing. Yeah. No, I, d I didn't really. I, I, now and then I'd speak to like my friends and that, and my mum sometimes, but it wasn't like I was pining to go back. I'm not one of these guys like who'll sit there and cry on hard times or struggle. Like I'll never say, oh, I've had a hard life. Like, because I haven't. Mm. I've just got on with life, what it's thrown at me. If you can ex sort of describe to me the difference between the Darren Till that went out to Brazil and the Darren Till that came back. Uh, four years older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, like, I'd say the Darren Till that came back was like a bit more mature, a bit more of a, not, not a man because I, I don't like that term because I feel like I've been a man since I was 15. Mm. A bit more, a bit more of a different outlook on the world maybe. What brought you back? The time was right. Uh, I never forget when Colin said, "When the time's right, you will have to come back. You've got to make a bit big bang." And, mm. I, and I did. I came back in 2016 on the Christmas, and last year I felt like I made a big bang. So everything that Colin said for the eight years I've known him has just come true. I was in New York shopping with my girlfriend, and we were in Zara, and some guy was like just shouting, "Darren, Darren!" And like I turned around, I was like, "Who the f is this guy?" <laughs> and and he's like, "Oh, can I get a photo?" And I'm like. What for? He's like, I watched your fight. I'm like, you're American now. He's like, yeah. And I said, come out then, let's get a selfie. And then I was like having food and these other guys like, oh my God, it's that until. And I'm like, oh my God, what's going on with my life? I got stopped loads in Brazil. Like loads of people recognised me in the streets, which was mad. Like you talk about another continent. Yeah. It's not another country, it's another continent. And people were stopping me and saying like, oh, 
We were fans, and I'm like, oh my god, Brazilian people are actually my fans. I, I'm never gonna quite get used to that. Yeah. Like in America, people stopping me, and then Brazil, and that's just mad. That for me, I, that just tops it all off. The photos, though, that's gonna get more and more. You're ready for that, right? That that's every day now. Like, yeah. On a daily basis, yeah. Like <laughs> some guy <laughs> messaged me on Instagram. He's like, I can't believe I've just seen you in the Asda. This was like the other day, and I was like, yeah, I was getting some chicken. He's like, oh, should I got a photo? Just no matter what happens in the pool, I get stuff for a photo. Do you feel conscious of it now when you're out? That yeah, you're so like... I'll be looking at people and I'll be like, is he either looking at me for a fight or does he want a photo? <laughs> I feel like I should say, mate, do you know me? And if he says no, I'll be like, oh, he doesn't know me. It's all right, mate, I'm a nobody. I love how you're still slightly looking for a fight, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's people, still in you. Sometimes people look at me and, and now I have to think, yeah, he's looking at me because he knows me. But then sometimes I'm thinking, no, he, he's looking at me because he's like, What's he's, yeah, he's feeling himself. I'm like, mate, don't even go there. Like, <laughs> let's get a photo.